You have your line drawing done using your pencil tool and the smooth tool to smooth it out. Um, the next thing you want to do is select that group and turn it into a live paint group. However, before I do that, I'm going to make a copy of all the lines. So I'm going to go reset my uh, workspace, window, workspace, reset essentials classic. So I want to bring out my layers panel and I want to make an entire copy of all the drawing lines that I've got on this layer. So I just simply click on the layer. I don't have to select the individual objects. By clicking on that layer, everything on that layer is selected. So if I copy this, edit, copy, or command C, and now I create a new layer, and I'm just going to call this Fancy Lines. Return, and I'm going to say Edit, Paste in Place. It's going to drop a brand new copy. You can see it highlight now in green for this new green layer, and I'm just going to temporarily switch that off. And you'll see why I'm going to do this a little bit later. On this layer here, we'll just call this the inking layer. Return. On the inking layer, I select the layer. All the lines have been selected. I'm going to go to Object. Then I'm going to go to Live Paint Gap Options. Uh, possibly, I should go over my drawing and make sure there are no gaps here, like I can see in the hairline. But if I go to Live Paint and choose Gap Options and select Large Gaps, I should be OK. Unless, of course, the gaps are ridiculously large. Then I'll go to Shape Builder tool and choose Live Paint Bucket. I want to bring in my color. And I'll choose the color for the skin. And this now allows me to fill in the skin, choose a color for the hair, fill in the hair, lighter. Um, and do the eyelids, the inside of the mouth, the tongue, and we'll choose the color of the shirt. Just keep filling these things in as such. Again, the color of the skin. Um, needs to be slightly lighter. Model.
and you can see where there are gaps it's filling in completely so I can use the direct selection tool make slight adjustments to this so that when we're using the paint bucket tool we can fill these areas separately I could still use a little adjustment here so this behaves separately go and back to the paint bucket and now this will fill individually Okay, so once you've got it inked, I'll show you now why I reserve this extra copy. So I bring in this extra copy. We don't notice any difference. However, I'm going to lock down the inking layer, so I just lock it down. Then we come into the fancy lines layer, and if I use this tool right here, called the width tool, I can now give thick and thin lines. So if we imagine lighting coming from top left down, I can use that width tool to generate thicker lines where there should be shadow. Likewise, I can do that here. And it just gives um, a more robust rendering which implies light and shadow better than without. And the problem with using this approach, simply doing inking, um, is that it only allows mono lines. It doesn't allow lines of varying thickness. And that's kind of a, a weak point. However, by making a duplicate of the lines, we can then go over it so anything that's in a live paint group has to have single width lines. They can be different thicknesses, but they just can't be variable thicknesses. So in, in that case, I can have a line there with that thickness. I could have a line of a completely different thickness. However, in a live paint group, you cannot have this scenario where you have a variable width line. So by taking all the line work, duplicating it, putting it over top of the original, and I start working on this, I'm able to get the best of both worlds. So I can continue that process. I don't want to do it too much because you can over exaggerate things sometimes. Um, but sometimes it's a, it's a nice effect to have. And it just helps to improve the depth. <coughs> as you see there. So that's increasing you know the contrast by using variable width implying shadow as you can see here under the arms and that just overall helps to make it look a little more realistic and that it may have been done using brushwork when you're done of course um, I'm gonna have you do a layout where you will have both your subjects side by side. So for that, I'm just going to unlock everything. I'm going to select everything in this layer, and I can scale it all down. 
whoops, got to make sure that I scale both of them at the same time. So select both layers. I'm holding the shift key down. Choose the targets. They're both selected. Scale them all down to about half their size. Likewise, I'll select the template. I'll scale that down to roughly the same size. And now I can do a layout. Now you've got to be careful. If you look at your scaling tool here in your toolbox, make sure that you have scale, strokes, and effects selected. So the reason for that is before you scale that down, make sure you have scale, strokes, and effects selected. And what that will do is it will scale those strokes and effects down proportionately. So I'll bring him down there. I'll select the template artwork. I'll scale him up there. And now I can present that work. Put some text in, and we can put original. And I'll make a copy of this, a nice easy way, option dragging. And we'll offset it so the whole thing's in balance. This offsets this, this offsets this, and I'll call that reproduction. I'll just move this down so it's kind of level with his feet. About the same distance from here to about here. And just move him over to roughly the same area. And there we have it. Original and reproduction. Or maybe we'll do a centered scheme. With the two drawings in opposition to one another. Okay, so we'll take that, make sure we save it as an AI file, and then we're going to also, for submission later on, we're going to save for web, export, save for web, and we want PNG 24, no transparency. Well, that's interesting. It's not showing the original. So we need to deactivate the template layer. So now we double click it, switch template off, click OK, resave it, Command S, and let's go File export, save for web one more time. And this time, PNG 24, switch off transparency. Click save. I'm going to call this first name, last name, character using the camel method and save that on my desktop. And now, we can take a look. We started with the original reference. We then traced it, saved a version with a layout featuring the original and the reproduction. And then we created a PNG, which you'll be submitting next week. And that's it.